It's better in the Bahamas. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Rogan, better known as this Bahamian gal. This is the home of big hair, bold looks, and big laughs. I show you how to break the internet without breaking the bank. If you're one of the millions of people who always wondered what it's like to live in paradise, and by paradise I'm talking about the islands of the Bahamas, my hometown, the land of my love, then you've come to the right place. So many people think about the wonderful beaches, the incredible food, and the beautiful people when they think about the Bahamas, but there's so much more to it. And if you're one of those people who is thinking about packing it all up and relocating to the islands of the Bahamas, also known as the land of 700 islands, there are things that you need to know. So in this week's video, I'm giving you 15 tips and tricks that you need to know before relocating to the Bahamas. If you're interested in learning all my tips and tricks, then continue watching. Ta da! Let's go. So if you were listening to me in the intro, you heard me say that this is the land of 700 islands. It is in fact 700 islands and keys. Now, not all of them are inhabited, but we are not a country that has just one island like say Barbados or Jamaica. We have many different islands and many of them are inhabited. So when you say you're going to move to the Bahamas, you need to do your research and figure out which island it is that you want to move to. Nassau, where I'm from, which is in New Providence, is the capital of the Bahamas, and so it's the city. And so there's a lot more bustling activity, way more people live there. Um, it's just a whole lot more going on in Nassau as opposed to, say, in Eleuthera or in Suma. So you have to do your homework to figure out which island you want to live on. What is it that tickles your fancy? What are you looking for? Are you looking for more city life or are you looking for more island life? You know something that's a little bit more leisurely so if that's what you're into a slower pace then you might want to explore the other islands which we call the family islands so don't just say i'm moving to the bahamas and not really think about which island you're moving to you also need to know that not all islands are the same there are people in other islands in the bahamas who refuse to move to nassau they hate nassau it's just too fast paced they figure it's just not their speed so if you're interested in a slower pace, consider one of the other family islands, but do your homework so you know exactly what it is that you're looking for and where you want to go. So another thing you need to know is we do not have all four seasons in the Bahamas. We have a wet season and a dry season, and the wet season is the one you really need to look out for because that is typically hurricane season. So there are folks who have never experienced a hurricane in a day in their life. Well, you have to get used to it because we are in a hurricane belt, which means we're in a hurricane zone. And so there's a high probability that every year we might have a hurricane or at least a tropical storm. So if that's not something that you're interested in, you might want to look elsewhere outside of the Caribbean because it's likely going to happen. A few years ago, we had a very terrible storm that created a lot of devastation, billions of dollars of devastation and uh, killed a lot of folks. Um, Bahamians are very accustomed to hurricanes, but that doesn't mean that they're not dangerous. Okay, so if you're going to relocate to the Bahamas, really consider whether or not you want to move into a place where there's a high probability of you experiencing a hurricane. I personally like hurricanes just because we're always so sunny, which I love, but it cools the weather down. But I don't like when they are like category fours and fives because they do create a lot of destruction and I don't want anybody to die. So think about that when you're relocating to the Bahamas. We completely live up to the credo of island time. Things just do not start on time in the Bahamas. They don't, not even government functions. You would think a government function of all things would start when it says it's going to start. Mm-mm. Bahamians are notoriously late people. So if you are somebody who relishes being on time, this might not be the country for you because it's just not going to happen. Another thing about being on island time, sometimes stores don't open when they say they're going to open. So especially if you're dealing with like a, a smaller mom and pop shop, you know, convenience store, and they're supposed to open at nine o'clock. Child, please, sit in your car and wait for them to pull up because it ain't happening. Mm-mm. They don't open on time, but they close in ahead of time too. So if they're supposed to close at five o'clock, it's more than likely that they're going to be closing at 4.50. If you go to a food place, and they say that they close at five o'clock, they probably start cleaning the kitchen around 4, 15. 
We drive on the left-hand side of the road. I know lots of people drive on the right-hand side. Do not say that we drive on the wrong side. We do not drive on the wrong side. We drive on the opposite side, the left-hand side of the road. And that takes some getting used to for a lot of people, especially when approaching roundabouts. I can't tell you how many tourists I've seen coming into the Bahamas and they get into accidents because they're approaching the roundabout going the right way, going the right way, going on the right, like they would in the States when we drive on the left-hand side. So please be aware of that. Even if you're just traveling, even if you're not relocating, but you're just traveling there um, for vacation, please stay left. I think like the cars even have like a little sticker that says, please keep left. Just keep left, keep left, keep left. And speaking of the way we drive, we also have our own language in the Bahamas uh, as it relates to road etiquette. And proper road etiquette mandates that you are polite with your horn. Now, what do I mean? If someone lets you out of a corner, in the States, I've noticed that you guys just kind of wave. I remember when I first moved here, when I went to school, I would blow to say thank you. And a friend of mine was like, don't do that. Don't do that. that uh, that's offensive. I'm like blowing to them to thank them is offensive. And like, that's not thanking them. That's like, you know, you're being aggressive. I'm like, oh, okay. I said, because we have our own language in the Bahamas. So if someone lets you out of the corner, um, the person would be like, beep, like to say thank you. And the other person who let them out of the corner would go, beep, beep, like, you're welcome. <laughs> I know it's so crazy. It takes getting used to, but you'll hear horns being blown a lot. Of course, there is road rage in the Bahamas. We're not always polite. And so you might hear a beep, what beep, beep. And all that is, is a bunch of cursing with the horns. So get used to the horns. A little short beep is like, thanks. Beep, beep, like, you're welcome. Beep is like, F you. I am telling you, you need to know this. It sounds so minute, so insignificant. This is important, ladies and gentlemen. Keep note. Another thing you need to know is that dealing with government agencies is the absolute, 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 absolute infinity worst thing ever. I'm not exaggerating. Do not, under any circumstance, plan to go to a government agency when you have to do business and attempt to do it on lunch hour. It's best you tell your boss you're gonna work half day and then go and deal with the government agency, or it's best you just take the day off and deal with that government agency because they're incredibly slow. Again, they're on island time and they just don't care to make your life any easier than it, and it almost feels like they're trying to complicate your, 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 your life. It really does. I don't care if you're going to the road traffic department to get your car licensed or to get your um your driver's license it's going to take hours and hours and hours and hours and hours to get done i don't care how efficient they say that they're going to be sometimes you know in those rare circumstances you can get something done maybe in two hours but those are rare circumstances just prepare to wear comfortable shoes tell your boss you ain't coming back for the rest of the day and just get comfortable at those government agencies do me a favor and do yourself a favor. And you're gonna come back to this video one day and you're gonna thank me, you're gonna say, boy, that Rogan, she was on point. Do not go into any government agency without these four things. Y'all ready? Get your pen. I got my pen and I already know this stuff. Go get your paper. You ready? Number one, your passport. Bring a current passport, unexpired passport. Just, just any, I don't care where you go. I don't care if you go to licensing car. I don't care if you go to the registrar department. I don't care where you go. Just make sure bring your passport. Bring your driver's license. Current, please bring your driver's license. You may have to bring a birth certificate. I don't care if you're born in Biloxi. Please bring your birth certificate. And number four, number four, and this is the most important one, more so than the passport, the driver's license, and your birth certificate. Bring cash. Bring cash. And I'll tell you why. Cash serves an integral purpose. It's for two things. Number one, some credit card machine always down, or some agency don't accept credit cards. The machine down. So always bring cash. It's like cash reigns supreme in the Bahamas, especially on the other islands outside of New Providence, outside of Nassau, you better bring cash because something always malfunctions, something always down. And number two, and this is another tip. The Bahamas is a big tip culture, huge tip 
culture. I know there are some cultures that shun accepting tips. Oh, we don't, we don't shun it. We accept tips. We expect tips. And Bahamians ask for tips in a different kind of way. It's really bribery, to be honest with you. It's, I can't put it any other way other than to say it's bribery. They'll say, child, I ain't had lunch yet. If you ever hear somebody who is dealing with your case, who is assisting you say they haven't had lunch yet, that's your clue to say, babes, I got $20 for you. Or I can get you lunch. Don't worry about that. What you eating today? What you want today? I am telling you, if you think you're going to go into an agency, this is so sad that I'm saying this, but it's the truth. I'm here to give you the truth, not to pretty it up. If you think you're going to go into an agency and they're going to expedite anything for you and you ain't buying them lunch or slipping them a little something, that'll be at the bottom of the pile and you'll be waiting. You'll turn into a skeleton by the time you wait for this thing to come through, I promise you. So it's a huge tip culture. Remember that. If nothing else, like I told you, I don't care if you leave your passport, your wife, your husband, your child, your umbilical cord at home, bring cash. Here's another thing you need to know. Living in the Bahamas is incredibly, incredibly expensive. I have people come into this country and they think like, oh, I'm just gonna live off the land. Damn, some Bahamians ain't even living off the land, okay? You need money. Everything is expensive. The cost of living is incredibly expensive. The majority of food products are imported into the country. That costs. So retailers, you know, the, the food grocers and whatnot, they will pass that cost on to the consumer. I was just recently in the Bahamas for two weeks. And I went into the food store for a face wash. And the face wash was like $16. And that same face wash I saw on Target for $4. I went into another store and the other the price was about $15. So it was close to $16 bucks for something that I would have gotten for $4 inside of Target. So you have to be prepared for that. That's why a lot of Bahamians will go away and purchase their things and put it on the boat and send it back home to the Bahamas because it's just really, really expensive. And of course they have to pay customs duty and all that stuff. Um, so just be prepared for that. Your money, unless you are really making some serious bank, your money will not go as far as you think it'll go in the Bahamas. And also because it's so expensive, eating out is expensive. So let me, let me school you guys to something you need to know. Uh, when you go to Applebee's and Chili's and all these places, if the server gives you good service, you will give him or her um, a tip, right? That's how it works in America. Um, I'm sure there are other places that have an automatic gratuity, but in the Bahamas, you are definitely, in any fine dining establishment, you are paying an automatic 15% gratuity to the person who is serving you. On top of that, we have VAT. What is it now, 12%? So 27% of your bill is allocated to gratuity and tax already. 27%. When you sit down, you order, you have to always remember 27% on every single thing. There is no better reminder that you're in an island nation than when you see things starting to shut down at 4.50 p.m., 5 o'clock in the afternoon. In the Bahamas, many stores, many retailers, they just shut down at five o'clock. It's just the way it's always been. Um, and so there isn't an active nightlife in the downtown area. Like most cities, like the downtown is when things, you know, things come alive in the afternoon because people are getting off of work and they want to go and have cocktails, they want to hang with their friends. There's no such thing in the city. It just, everything gets shut down, you know, unless you're in the hotel or um, one of the, um, the fine dining restaurants in like the east, uh, eastern portion of the island, New Providence or the western portion. It's really dead. It's really quiet. Um, on the family islands, oh my God, it's even worse. It's just really nothing to do after five o'clock. You basically have to make your own fun. Um, you have to make your own fun because it just gets really, really dead. I absolutely, that's one of the things I absolutely hated about my country. It's like, now it's only five o'clock and things are shutting down. When I was in Atlanta, things were heating up five o'clock. You know, now you're going into the nightlife. It's like, come on, what's that about? So if you're somebody who likes to uh, party with your friends after hours, you're gonna have to get creative. You're gonna probably be confined to the hotels or um, maybe a seedier establishment or one of the nice restaurants you guys can meet up there for cocktails, but it's gonna be tough to find that. I'm getting real with you.
you are moving to Nassau, please know that you will not have access to the best beaches of the Bahamas. In my opinion, the best beaches that I've witnessed, I've visited many, many, many Bahamian islands. The best beaches for me were found in Exuma. If you've never been to Exuma, please take a trip there. It's an incredible island. It's just so beautiful, lots of natural beauty, but the beaches are breathtaking. I can't even begin to explain how gorgeous the water is and how pure and, and refined the sand is. It's just, it's like, it's like putting your feet into flour. And it's like seeing sparkling sapphires on the water. And I know I might sound like I'm exaggerating, but I'm not. It is that gorgeous. So Exuma, Eleuthera, Cat Island, have some amazing beaches. Nassau has some amazing beaches, but they're obscured by um, the resorts. They're, t or I shouldn't say obscured. Well, maybe I should. The resorts kind of, you know, they're situated where a resort is or private homeowners um, in like um, gated communities. And so they have access to like some of the best beaches. And so I feel like in Nassau, you'll get like the leftover beaches. And they're still nice, but they're not the greatest beaches that the Bahamas has to offer. So if you're looking for like waking up, if you want to wake up early in the morning and, and go to a gorgeous beach, I personally would say that Nassau ain't it, unless you're living over Paradise Island or you live somewhere in the West, far, far West, it's just not as beautiful as the other islands of the Bahamas. That's just my opinion. I'm sure some Bahamian is going to be like, uh-uh, I prefer Sanders Beach. Not freaking me. If I step in on rock, ain't good enough for me so just keep that in mind when you're thinking about beaches not all beaches are created the same they don't look the same they don't feel the same and because there are such limited beaches in new providence a small island you'll find that lots of bahamians congregate to those beaches so if you're looking for more seclusion nassau ain't it boo boo as it relates to transportation you're gonna need a car you're absolutely gonna need a car. Do all Bahamians have cars? Absolutely not. Not all Bahamians can afford cars. Not all Bahamians want cars. Some are quite content relying on the public system, but the problem is the, the public's bus system is not a unified one. And so the schedule, there is no schedule. Number one, we know what time they start, and we know what time they stop running. But there's no, hey, at 10 o'clock this bus will come, at one o'clock this bus will come. Get that out of your mind, that doesn't happen. You'll see a bus when you see one. You know, and, and that's just it. Um, there's no Uber or Lyft in the Bahamas. Take that out of your mind. The taxis, I mean, they're mostly confined to the hotels and um, some restaurants can call for a taxi. Um, and the airport, of course, have, has taxis. But finding a taxi, like just calling like a, like how you have like the yellow cab service and all that stuff in like New York or different um, parts of the US, uh-uh. Mm -mm. And some taxis are reluctant to come into certain areas. So your luck, buck, you're screwed if you need a taxi and you're in a certain area, they just won't come. Um, so you're definitely going to need a car. Um, cars are expensive in the Bahamas, again, because things are imported. So um, a lot of times, Bahamians will import vehicles from Japan or China because they're cheaper. And those are like the right-hand drive cars. Uh, that's another thing you need to know. A lot of cars in the Bahamas have the right the steering wheel on the right hand side. So you're going to have to get it accustomed if you're moving there and you want an inexpensive vehicle that's, that's not an American brand. You're going to be driving on the left hand side in a right handed vehicle. So please know that. But as far as transportation, my advice is to get you a car. Even if you've got to get you a little buggy, meaning a little chuk chuk car, like a little, you know, the car ain't that fancy. It's just, you know, it's a point A to point Z car get you one of those vehicles um, it's cheaper to insure and just keep it pushing because it gets expensive real quick and the roads are not the greatest in the Bahamas so you don't necessarily want to get like the best car because all your shocks will be gone your shocks will be in shock at how bad the roads are okay so give it two years your car will start squeaking real talk <laughs> Familiarize yourself with the word pot cake. Now, pot cake means two things in the Bahamas. It can either mean the burnt remains of a pot, meaning if you're making rice or, or food grits and it burns at the bottom, that's called pot cake. 
but in the way that I'm about to use it, it means a stray dog that's a mixed breed pot cake. We have a terrible stray dog problem in the Bahamas. I see tourists petting these dogs all the time. Some of them have homes but a lot of them don't. They're just stray dogs on the street and it's not uncommon to be driving in the best of areas and seeing a stray dog. It's gotten much better over the years, but it's still a problem. When I went home for a few weeks, I, I almost forgot about the stray dog problem because I don't see them in DC. I've never, I can honestly say, and I've only been here for a little over a year, like a year, yeah, a little over a year, I've never seen a stray dog, like ever, 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 ever. And in the Bahamas, when I was driving from the airport, I was like, that's a stray dog, that's a pot cake. Like I totally forgot, so get used to it. I hate it, uh, Bahamas are not the greatest when it comes to spaying and neutering their pets, and as a result, um, you know, the, the stray dog and stray cat population, they kind of run out of control. Uh, so you're going to see them. You're definitely going to see them. Now, it's not thousands of them in the road. I'm not going to, you know, paint that picture. But sometimes you'll see six of them walking alongside each other because they're friends. They know each other. So get used to that. That's what you're going to see in the Bahamas. I don't care what island you go on, you're going to see a stray dog. The Bahamas is a real place in the real world. Let me repeat that. The Bahamas is a real place in the real world. And you're probably gonna say, well, duh. Like, what else could it be? There's a reason why I say that. A lot of times people come into the country and they think, wow, I'm in paradise. Crime can't happen here. No, this is a real place, a real country in the real world. Crime happens everywhere. Now, we might not have as much crime as other countries, but we do have crime and people have to be smart. So if you're moving to this country thinking that, oh, it's just, it's wonderful and I don't have to worry about anything, then you're mistaken. There are gangs in the Bahamas. There are bad people in the Bahamas. Huh? So you have to have your wits about you. So don't go down some dark, creepy ass alley thinking you can't die in paradise. You can't. And finally, please know this. This is very, 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 very important. The Bahamas, and a lot of people don't know this, is a very, very, very political place. In my mind, it's mini DC. This is mini Washington DC. And people are very aligned with their political party and they don't care if their political parties, politicians are doing the worst things in the world. They will support them regardless. They have an uncanny loyalty to their party that just, it blows my mind. Someone like me, I'm a centrist. And so I don't quite get this loyalty thing. You know, for me, I call it as it is. But some people will see, they will see their political leaders shoot someone in the face and they they'll still support them people are serious about their party and um there's a lot of victimization that still goes on you'll understand once you move to the bahamas what i'm talking about so the best thing i could you know, the best advice i can give you is if you do feel a certain way about one political party over the over the next avoid all conversations with people don't take sides just just Keep it to yourself, especially if you're relocating to the Bahamas, you, you're not going to be able to vote anyway. So you don't have to get that caught up or invested, you know, just kind of, you know, you can hear people out, but don't, don't, don't get too involved because you don't want to be labeled as anything. Because once you're labeled as something, it's just disaster. Just, 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 just keep your ambivalence. That's amazing political currency. So guys, we've reached the end of my video. I hope that this has been helpful to many of you. If there are Bahamians um, who are watching this, I'd be more than appreciative for you to leave comments down below. If many of you are expats who relocated from Canada, the US, Europe, Australia, wherever, Asia, and you're in the Bahamas, and you agree with this, disagree with this, please again, leave comments down below. I wanna hear what you have to say. Um, I've lived in the Bahamas all my life, except for when I went to school um, in Cuba and school in Georgia and um, now in, in living in the United States. Um, other than that, 
I've been in the Bahamas. I know how we go. Them people is mine. I know them long time, okay? Wonderful country, beautiful country. But I think if anybody is thinking about relocating, um, they need to know the real. You're gonna get all the amazing talking points as to why it's so amazing to live in the Bahamas. And it truly is amazing to live there. But you also need to know the dark side. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give it a big like, a thumbs up. Don't forget to leave comments down below. And of course, subscribe to my channel if you like this content and you wanna see more. Um, thank you again to all of my wonderful subscribers, the people who stay with me, who watch my videos all the time. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I will see you next week, Wednesday at one o'clock Eastern Standard Time. I always say this without fail. Y'all gotta be plugged into my channel. Your girl be working hard on her, okay? But thank you so much for watching. Love you, and I'll see you next week. Bye.